Tonight's program is entitled, Does Yahweh's Law Apply Today? And our guest will be Ja from Ireland. And this is the 7th day of June, year 2001. And before we begin, I just wanted to read you a quick verse out of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 26. And said, If you will diligently listen to the voice of Yahweh your Father, and do what is right in his sight, and will give ear to his laws, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am Yahweh Rafika, which is Yahweh your healer. Now if you notice, if you will listen diligently to the voice of your father, and the Geneva Bible has a note in the section here that says, and do what is right in his sight, the note says, which is to only do that which Yahweh commands. So he commands us, and I could give you, I've got a whole page and a half here of biblical verses which would let you know that his Yahweh indeed does, his law does apply today, but we're going to go into that in more detail and maybe a few other things with our guest. Is John on the line yet? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Nice to be with you again. Thank you, sir. And uh, how's things in Ireland? Oh, they're pretty quiet, unfortunately. The uh, request campaign doesn't seem to be getting us very far with the Irish Minister for Heritage. And uh, I believe you understand that because you sent in a request yourself and got a, a reply which you emailed me about saying that uh, you know it was a pathetic reply and that uh, it's obvious that they want people to believe the New World Order's version of things rather than the truth. Yes, yes. The letter I received from uh, Ireland basically said that they only recognized, quote, licensed archaeologists and of the licensed archaeologists they only accepted those with quote approved uh, programs yeah that's right which is a good a good way of uh, stonewalling absolutely and as you said Ja the uh uh, it would certainly guarantee that the politically correct version of history will be the one that everybody gets to hear, and uh, they'll never hear a different opposing point of view if they uh, can lock everything up in uh, legalities such as permits and licenses. Yeah, and that's what they always do. And uh, you, you must have, well, I know that you personally understand, but maybe the, the listeners also uh, are starting to understand, maybe some of them understand already what we're really up against uh, as far as the new world order is concerned is that satan gets the new world order and, and his politicians who are all part of that to make up rules and regulations to prevent people from doing what god wants them to do and they make up other rules in order to force them to do things that god doesn't want them to do in order to control the people and the only way to defeat the New World Order, and it is the only way to defeat the New World Order, is to get rid of all their legislation and go back to God's laws. This is all, all that's happening is all predicted in prophecy in the Bible. And uh, I'd like to start off by reading, I, I hope you uh, listeners have a, a pencil or a pen and paper, to jot down some Bible references. I'm going to read them some passages and I'm going to tie them together for them, possibly in a way they've never heard before, to explain that all of this was predicted and also the solution to the problem is also predicted. Now, I, I found out in various ways that Michigan uh, has a lot of militias. Uh, and it prides itself on being uh, the heart of, of the resistance movement to the New World Order. Well, that's fine, but if they don't fight the way that Yahweh, or Father as I call him, uh, has told them to fight, then they will never win. I know a lot of American people are going on about the American Constitution, and they are most of them unaware that the Constitution was given to them by these people of the New World Order in order to deflect them and keep them away from God's law because they could never have set up the New World Order if God's laws was in force. So they had to put in 
the Constitution and they've written all these nice speeches that sound very noble. But the whole thing is to keep people away from God's laws. If people had kept God's laws, then there would be new, no New World Order, there would be no Ruby Ridge, there would be no Waco, there would be no Sandpoint, Idaho. None of this, all of these things, none of it would be happening. And they know that. So I'd like to read this uh, piece from the Bible. And... Uh, I'll give the references so that people can then jot them down and then later on they can look at them and study them themselves. And I'd like to start with Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. And it, uh, it's from verse 12 to verse 15 that I'm going to read. And it starts off, As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and lead thee astray to thy destruction. The I am which is Yahweh, I hope everybody knows that Yahweh means I am. And you can't say the Yahweh standeth up, so I'm going to change it into English and put I am. Okay, so verse 13 is, The I am standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people. The I am will enter into judgment of the elders of his people and the princes thereof. Well, in the context that we would speak today, the elders of his people are the politicians, the senators, the representatives in America, and the princes thereof. And the princes are always known as the, the, the princes of the church. That's the cardinals, the bishops, the archbishops, etc. So I'll go to the beginning of that verse again. It says, The I am will enter into judgment of the elders of his people, and the princes thereof. For ye have eaten up the vineyard. The share that belongs to the poor is in your houses. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor? Saith the I am Lord of hosts. So that's the situation that we're in today. Everybody's oppressed. People have been robbed under false legislation. Then Yahweh, your father, calls to his people and he says, Hear ye deaf. And look, ye blind, that ye may see. So he's obviously not talking about physically deaf and blind people. He's talking about spiritually deaf and blind people. Because he says, look and hear, that you may see and hear. And then goes on to explain. This is in, sorry, I should have said, this is in Isaiah chapter 42, starting at verse 18 through to verse 23. So he says, Hear ye deaf, and look ye blind, that ye may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is as blind as he that thinks he is perfect, and blind as the I am servant? And the I am servant, and the person, the messenger, the person, the people that, that he's talking to are the people Israel. Now most of your listeners are aware of who that refers to. It refers to the ten lost tribes, which includes the American people. And then he goes on in verse 20 to say, Seeing many things, but thou takest no notice, opening the ears, but he heareth not. The I am is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them trapped in pigeonholes, like nine to five pigeonholes of the jobs that they have where they work as slaves for the system. And they are hid in prison houses. A lot of people have been wrongly imprisoned. They are for a prey, and no one delivereth them. For a spoil, and none saith, restore their share to them. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Okay, now you'll notice in verse 21, it says, the I am is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Now he doesn't say the American Constitution. He doesn't say the British legal system. He says the law and he means his law in the Bible, in the Torah, which is in the covenant, which is at the hill of Tara. And that's what the link with this is, is that that's what I need to recover. We, we need to recover to return to it. Okay, so why did Father allow this to happen to you, to his people? Why did he allow you to end up trapped in pigeonholes, robbed and spoiled, hidden in prison houses, to be for a prey, 
and no one's delivering them for a spoil, and none says restore their share to them. Who will listen to this? Who will listen? Are any of your listeners listening to this? Are they taking notice? This is, this is Father speaking to them, telling them what's wrong. Okay? So why did Father allow this to happen to you? So then we go to verse 24 of the chapter 42 of Isaiah, which is a continuation. And it says, Who gave Jacob for a spoil, and Israel to the robbers? Did not the I am, he against whom we have sinned, for they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. So, quite clearly, Father is telling you that he has allowed this to happen to you, to teach you a lesson. And the reason it's all happened is because you haven't kept his law. You haven't kept his ways, his statutes, and his judgments. Neither were they obedient unto his law. Therefore hath he poured upon him the fury of his anger, and the strength of battle. And it has set him, Israel, the American people and all the other related peoples, on fire round about. Yet he understood not, and it burned him, and he took it not to heart. He didn't learn from it. He's suffering under it, and he still hasn't learned the lesson that he's only suffering, and he's only being allowed to suffer by Father because they are not keeping his law, which was given to Israel to protect them from oppression by these rich and powerful people of the New World Order. Okay, and in Scripture it says, When my people acknowledge their sin, and they seek me, I will hear them. And in their affliction, they will seek me early. So he is allowing all of this to happen to his people, for them to be afflicted, so that they will seek him and seek the solution to their problem. So now you know why you are suffering. So what is the solution? On the last page of the Old Testament, in Malachi, or Malachi, however you want to pronounce it, chapter 4, verse 1, through to 6, at the end of the Old Testament, it tells us, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn like an oven, and all the proud, yes, and all that do wickedly, shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the I am Lord of hosts that it shall leave of them neither root nor branch. If there's no root and there's no branch, there is nothing. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the I am Lord of hosts. Remember ye and return to the law of Moses my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and the judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the I Am. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. And God has sent Elijah the prophet. And that time is now, because I am him. So, he's given us, he's told us what would happen. That the people, their noses would be ground by the grindstone. That they would be robbed and spoiled under false legislation. And he would allow this to happen because the people refused to keep his law. And then he's told you, that the, what you have to do in order to put it right. He's told you that you have to remember and return to the law of Moses, not the American Constitution. The law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. And he says he will send Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the I am. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Well, the curse is the one that is expressed in, in verse 1, which says that the day cometh that will burn like an oven. So he's given you an option, okay? The option is that you return to keeping God's law and his statutes and his judgments or burn. It's as simple as that. 
And if you think there's any other option, there is absolutely none. You can search the, every page of the Bible that you want. There is no other option. Absolutely none. You have to return to his law or everybody's going to burn. Now, he's told you that all of this would happen, that the New World Order, which is, there is nothing new about the New World Order. It's been going on for at least 2,600 years. The conspiracy started in Jerusalem, and it was a result of that conspiracy, referred to by both Ezekiel and Jeremiah, that Jerusalem was overthrown, that the temple was destroyed, and that Jeremiah took the Ark of the Covenant with Tiatafri, King Zedekiah's daughter, and the Leophail, first to Tifanis in Egypt, and then to Ireland, which I explained in the last program. So there's nothing new about the New World Order. Absolutely nothing. Now, the New World Order, Father has told you how to defeat them. There is only one way. If you don't do it exactly as he tells you, you will lose. Now, I think that you all know what the New World Order have in mind for you. And it isn't nice. Now, you have, really, you're between a rock and a hard place. You're between the rock, which is God's law, and the hard place, which is the New World Order. Because if the New World Order don't get you, then the rock will. He's already told you, if you don't return to his law, that he's going to burn you up. So you either fight the New World Order to reinstate God's law, and have God on your side, helping you every step of the way, in which case you will win, or you don't do it, and the New World Order will get you, and after that, you will all burn. So, it's really, it's fight or die. And I know that you have, you have a lot of militias listening in, but they, they keep getting themselves in trouble because they don't understand what the Bible says. And they don't understand that God has already told them all this is going to happen. And he's told them exactly what to do to put it right. And he will let them get into trouble, and you'll have wakos, and you'll have all sorts of other problems, until you turn back to God in your affliction. You seek him early and return to his law. Now, the New World Order's power base is their legislation. Without that, they can't operate. If you remove their legislation and go back to God's laws, their whole house of cards will fall. That is why it says in Deuteronomy 4, verse 2, You shall not add to the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the I am your God, which I command you. Okay? So God knew that these people would make their own legislation in order to rob you, because that's what it is. This legislation they have made up is all illegal, it's fraudulent, and they have used it to take away your money and your land and make you poor and miserable, okay? And he knew they would do this. This is why he wrote in the law, in Deuteronomy, you shall not add unto the word which I command you. You will not add to the law, neither shall ye diminish anything from it that you may keep the commandments of the I am your God, which I command you. Okay? So, there's the answer. He knew this was going to happen. He warned you about it, warned you again through Isaiah, and still you didn't listen. And so you ended up in the mess that you're in now. Okay? So, the way to defeat the New World Order is to get rid of their legislation because it's unlawful, according to God. The only law that is lawful on this planet is God's law. Now, you claim to be his people. You can't be his people if you don't obey him. You are the children of whom you obey. If you obey God, you are his children. If you obey Satan, then you are Satan's children. You must choose who you will obey. I want you to think about that, and I want you to think about that very, very carefully. Who are you really serving? If you serve the New World Order, if you don't fight them, then you are part of the problem, and you are serving them. And they are serving Satan, and that means that by default, you are serving Satan. You have to fight these people. God has told you if you don't do it and reinstate his laws, that he's going to burn you up. Because it's only by fighting these people and reinstating God's law that you will prove to God whose side you are on. 
It's no good just saying, oh, well, we're on your side, but we're going to sit here and do nothing, and we're going to help the New World Order because we're not going to fight them. You have to fight them. Now, if we talk about this legislation and we talk about the Rothschilds, and a long time ago, one of the Rothschilds, I believe it was Mayor Amstel Rothschild, he made a statement and he lied because... He said, I care not who makes a country's laws as long as I make their money. Now, that was a lie. And it's proved to be a lie, and I'll explain why. The reason he made that statement, he was a con man. And he made that statement to deceive people. He judged everyone by his own standards. And he assumed that everyone was like him and had their price. Okay, unfortunately, he was right about most people. Uh, we have to go to our break. You want to continue that after the break, so just stay tuned for a couple minutes here, and we'll continue with that, okay? Okay. Uh, if you're interested in when Jaw was on the program last, you need to call Steve Melching. Steve Melching at 219-356-2611. The number you were just given, and tell him you would like the broadcast of April 3rd, year 2001. And again, that was when Jaw was on last time, and we went into the uh, Hill of Ta and Tia Tefi and the uh, Jeremiah the Prophet, etc. An excellent broadcast. Also, I want to remind the folks, if you're in the lower Michigan area, there will be a rally to support Mark Cornkey, Brad Metcalf, and other men who have been unlawfully uh, imprisoned simply because they are, quote, not politically correct. And uh, this again, this is a rally in the Lansing area of lower Michigan. And again, tonight is, does Yahweh's law apply? And, uh, Ja, if you want to pick up where you left off, telling us about the Rothschilds, etc. Okay, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned about Mark Kernke and other people who have been wrongfully imprisoned. And they could not have been imprisoned if people had enforced God's law. He hasn't done anything wrong under God's law. Neither did Randy and Vicky Weaver. Neither did the people at Waco, but I'll come to that, okay? So I'll pick up where I left off. I'll just backtrack a couple of sentences and, and then pick up this red for you, okay? Okay. So the New World Order, okay, legis their legislation is their power base. If you remove that, their whole house of cards will fall, okay? The whole thing will collapse if you do that. And that's why it says in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2, You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the I am your God which I command you. Now, the commandments he refers to are not just the Ten Commandments. The whole of the Torah, his law, is known as the commandments. So bear that in mind. It says you must return to the laws, the statutes, and the judgments. The commandments are the principles that you must abide by. If you keep to those principles, you will not break the law. Jesus simplified it even more in the New Testament. And he said if you keep the two commandments, if you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, and him only will you serve. And then the second commandment, which is that you love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. If you do that, you cannot harm anyone else. You cannot do, you can't break any of the other commandments if you keep those two. So he simplified it for you. Okay, so anyway, I was talking about Rothschilds and how Mayor Emshel Rothschild lied when he said, I care not who makes a country's laws as long as I make their money. He judged everyone by his own standards and assumed that everyone was like him and had their price. Unfortunately, it appears he was right about the majority of people. The fact that the New World Order got their puppet politicians to enact the Federal Reserve Act in 1913, and the fact that the New World Order had John F. Kennedy killed when he went to repeal it, is proof that the Rothschilds lied. Their Achilles heel is the Bible, the Torah, which means the law, in the covenant, which is buried at the, the original is buried at the hill of Tara, and that's where we started out last time I was on the show. 
So the reason that it's their Achilles heel is that it prohibits not only legislation, but usury upon which their system thrives. If you cut off their illegal legislation and usury, they will fall. They claim to be God's chosen people, but they break God's laws. Throw the Bible law at them and see how they squirm. They can't claim to be God's chosen people and break his laws. It's one or the other. Also, there are many Muslims in America. The Muslims are also commanded in the Quran to keep the covenant and God's laws in the Torah. So you should think of them as potential allies, not necessarily as enemies. You have people that I've heard of like the promise keepers. And they also have a large following. And they cannot call themselves promise keepers and break the covenant. They're promised to God. And then there are the Christian militias, of whom there are many in, in Michigan, or so I've been told. That gives a power base of millions of soldiers to arrest the legislators and the usurers and put them on trial under God's law. Once the Alphabet Soup Brigade find out the truth, they will divide along the lines of whom they follow, God or the New World Order. You have to force the legislators to repeal all legislation or be tried for treason against God and suffer the penalty in God's law, which is execution. Peter said in Acts 5, verse 29, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a saviour, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Spirit, whom God hath given to them that obey him. And then the first letter of Peter, chapter 4, verse 17. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? So, you have the solution to the problem. I sent it over the last week, and some of you may have received it. I don't know what email lists you're on and what militia groups you may or may not be members of. And I don't really need to know that. But I send out a message to everybody, asking them, explaining them to them what they should do. And the message I sent out was called the Proclamation of Liberty. And I'll read it to you. It starts off Proclamation of Liberty. And then there's a quote from Leviticus, which I understand is on the Liberty Bell, which is a bell that has a fancy name, but it, there doesn't seem to be much liberty these days. People aren't ringing it. Leviticus 25.10 says, Proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. And then this thing that I've sent out, and I've had no replies, it says, We the people, in order to form a more perfect union and set ourselves free from oppression, demand that all of the legislative branches of government, federal, state, and local, including the president and vice president, shall repeal and cease to enforce all and every piece of man-made legislation, all of which is criminal, fraudulent, and treason against the God in whom we trust, and also against we, his people. Yahweh, I am, has expressly forbidden men from legislating, and has commanded that any and all persons found guilty of doing so should be executed by public stoning or by any other means available to carry out that task. That's what the law says. Usury is unlawful, expressly prohibited, and therefore we the people demand that the Federal Reserve Bank be prohibited from charging interest and that all interest payments already paid to the Federal Reserve Bank shall be refunded in full, forthwith, and redistributed equally amongst all the citizens of these United States of America. We the people, therefore, give the legislators, including the President and Vice President, 15 days to take the necessary steps 
to repeal all previous man-made legislation and revert to enforcing only God's laws in the Bible. Failure to comply with this order from we the people and the direct command of God as expressed in the Bible will result in the guilty being executed. We the people demand that all persons convicted under man-made legislation and that counts for Mark Kernke and others who have been part of, the, of your movements, okay? We the people demand that all persons convicted under man-made legislation and therefore wrongfully imprisoned shall be released immediately and the judges who unlawfully condemned and sentenced them shall take their places in prison and personally compensate the offended persons for their wrongful imprisonment. Furthermore, anyone collaborating with the enemy by seeking to or enforcing and or administering any of the aforementioned illegal legislation against we the people is guilty of the same crimes as the legislators and will according to God's law also be lawfully executed. You have been warned, signed, the Fremen, the Freemen. Now, if you send that out to all the legislators, they have a decision to make. They either return or they suffer the penalty. Now, hopefully no one will refuse to obey God. And no one, none of the legislators, will refuse to repeal all this false legislation that they've used to enslave you. And nobody will be punished. But the choice is theirs. And your choice is whether you obey God or whether you obey the new world order and suffer what they have in store for you. If you want to defeat them, then you have to do what God has told you to do. There is no other alternative. Okay, if we look now for, for a moment, uh, we mentioned, uh, Daniel mentioned Mark Kernke, okay, but there's also, as I mentioned earlier, there's people like Randy and Vicky Weaver. They broke no laws, okay? Now, I saw on the television over here in Europe a program about Ruby Ridge, and they interviewed a, a female neighbor of the Weavers, and although she supported Randy and Vicky Weaver, she had been deceived by the New World Order and its programming of people's minds, because she was deceived into believing that Randy had broken a law by sawing the barrel of his shotgun, and so it was okay for all these people in uniforms to come and do what they did to him. And, you know, that's totally wrong. There is no law in the Bible against what he did. Nowhere in the Bible does it give men the right to make up laws. In fact, it expressly forbids men from doing so. And I've read you the piece from Deuteronomy more than once, so I won't read it again. Randy broke no law, no commandment. Therefore, he committed no crime, and neither did his wife, who was murdered by a sniper in cold blood. There is no law in the Bible giving that sniper, and I believe his name is Lon Horiuchi. If it isn't, then I apologize to him. There is no law in the Bible giving that sniper the right to murder Vicky Weaver, nor to give him immunity from prosecution. If he fired the shot that killed Vicky Weaver, then he is a murderer, pure and simple, and should be treated and punished as such. If Reno ordered the FBI into Waco, then she is guilty of mass murder and should be arrested for her crimes, along with all others co-responsible for the crimes committed at Waco. The Branch Davidians, as far as we know, and obviously the news is limited, but as far as we know, the Branch Davidians broke no law by having firearms. There was therefore no legitimate reason for the assault by the ATF, who were committing a criminal offense and breaking God's law by attacking Waco. If they were killed whilst perpetrating that crime, it is their own fault for breaking the law. And according to God's law, the Davidians have committed no crime by doing so. Police who enforce illegal laws are committing a crime by so doing and should be treated as criminals, just as the Davidians did by killing them in self-defense, only in self-defense. Don't be deceived by the badges and the uniforms that they are wearing in order to deceive you into believing that they are enforcing the law when in reality they are breaking the law and are actually criminals impersonating policemen. Your minds have been conditioned to believe that these people are carrying out the law, when in reality they are committing criminal acts against law-abiding citizens. 
you have all been mind controlled to have inverted vision and to see things backwards the way Satan wants you to see them. I hope this isn't too much for, for the people that are listening. Oh, no, you're, you're right on track. Keep on going. Okay, I, I hope everyone's enjoying this because it's something that everybody may not want to hear, but it's something they need to hear. And they um, need to act on thing. and do it now, okay? Yeah. One other so, thing. The, the way yeah, they have been conditioned to see the police is wrong, okay? And it's reminiscent of the John Carpenter film, They Live where everyone needs to put on the special glasses and see things as they really are, not the way that you've been taught to see them. You have to break through that programming and inverted vision and see the world through God's eyes, not through Satan's eyes, as you have been wrongfully taught to do. The best example I can give you of this is the other John Carpenter film, Starman, where an extraterrestrial who has been invited by Voyager 2 to come to visit Earth, and that could have been Jesus, or it could have been God himself coming in that UFO, all right? It's set a science fiction, but it tells a valid story, that this extraterrestrial was invited by the Voyager 2 probe to come to visit Earth, and as soon as he does so, he is attacked by criminals in various uniforms and crashes in Michigan at Sheboygan Bay. So that's kind of on topic too, because we're speaking to the people of Michigan. He sees these uniformed people clearly as the criminals that they really are. And when attacked by these uniformed criminals for doing absolutely nothing wrong, he aims to shoot these uniformed criminals because that's how he sees them. And he sees them correctly because his mind hasn't been programmed to see things backwards. But the woman with him, who has been brainwashed into having inverted vision, tries to stop him because she thinks they are policemen enforcing the law. And so God punishes her for doing so, and under divine justice, she's shot and killed by the police that she's wrongfully defending. That's perfect divine justice. The bullies in the uniforms are eventually scared away. And they're scared and they run away when the mothership arrives to rescue him just as will happen when the reaping begins, but there will be nowhere safe enough for them to hide. I've explained all of this in my book called The Way Home or Face the Fire because that's what the option is. You either keep God's law and go home or you face the fire. And in the book, I've explained everything that you need to know. Now, the book, if you want more details of it, I'll give you a URL web link where you can go on my website to, to read a little bit about it and to see the address where you can send for it. And the website is http colon slash slash i dot a m slash j a h slash w a y a d dot h t m and in it i explain everything that you need to know okay people tell you that god created the earth and humans but nobody tells you why you know was he bored so i've explained why it was necessary for god to create the earth why necessary for him to create humans and what a being is, where it came from, and why it's placed inside a human that then makes a human being. Now, we all talk uh, on this program, and, and lots of other people talk about being Israelites, and racially being Israelites. Okay, well that's fine. But it's no good being a racial Israelite if you're not keeping the law and obeying God. The meaning of the word Israel is the champion of God. That means that anyone who champions God's cause in the world is an Israelite. So if Jesus told you, uh, and he mentioned about the Roman centurion, he said when the Roman centurion asked him to cure his, his servant, he said, you know, I haven't found so much faith. No, not in Israel, you know, as in this man. And then made a statement that many would come from east and west and sit down with Abraham and the children of the Israelites would be cast out into outer darkness. So it's no good just being a racial Israelite and thinking that everything depends on that and you don't have to do anything. 
The word Israel means champion of God. If you are not championing God's cause to reinstate his laws, statutes and judgments, and to set up his kingdom on earth, then you're not really an Israelite, not in the true sense of the word. Israel were given a job under the covenant. They were given lots of promises, but they were given a job as part of those promises. And that job was to keep the covenant, to keep God's laws, his statutes and his judgments, and to be his demonstration people to the rest of the world of how wonderful it is to live under God's laws. So that then the whole world route would see it and see how their crops grew and they had no crime and they had everything they needed and everybody helped everybody and they had a wonderful time. And the other people who weren't keeping the covenant, their crops wouldn't grow and they wouldn't have enough to eat and they would see what the Israelites had and they would say, well, well we want some of that. And they would attack it to try and steal because that's what people always do. But they would be defeated because God said that he, as long as his people keep the covenant, he will fight their wars for them. He will defeat their enemies. So the people would be defeated and then they would come and say, well, we're sorry we attacked you because we wanted what you got and you beat us anyway. So is there any way that we can share what you have? And then they were to be told, yes, if you keep the covenant that we made with God, then you will also become Israelites, you will be grafted into Israel, the boundaries of Israel would then expand to take in these nations round about, and their crops would then grow, and everything would be fine for them as long as they kept God's law. And then the people outside would see that, and then the whole process would keep going until everybody was living and keeping the covenant, and the kingdom of Israel was all over the world, and everybody was keeping it. But that didn't happen because people allowed other people to legislate. And we have the New World Order. And it's not new. It's been going on for 2,600 years. When are you going to stop it? There's only one way to stop it. And that is to go back to keeping God's laws. And to make the legislators back down. Now, the legislators can be bought or they can be frightened by the New World Order to keep making up this legislation to rip you off, make you poor, and enslave you. So the only way that you're going to stop that from happening is if these legislators are more afraid of you than they are of the New World Order. And the only way they're going to be more afraid of you is if you tell them what's going to happen to them if they don't keep God's law and get rid of all this illegal legislation that they've made up. You have to put the fear of God into these people. Now, I can help you to do that, and I will help you to do that, if you want me to. I've told you tonight what the situation is. I've told you what the options are. I hope that you will send for this book, and I hope you will study it, and then you will know where I'm coming from, and you will know all that you need to know in order to decide whether you want to fight or whether you want to lose. Because one way or another, you're going to lose if you don't fight. So really, it's up to you. If anybody oh. wants to learn, or if anybody wants me to send them any information, okay, I can send, I've sent to all the Patriot groups that I know of, but I don't know them all. If anybody wants me to send them a copy of this Proclamation of Liberty, and I know that's part of the, of the, the raison d'etre of this radio station, I will send a copy of this, I'll email it to, to Daniel, I'll email it to anybody that wants it. But it's no good if you don't agree to do it and you don't make lots and lots of copies and send it to all the legislators. I believe there's 537 of them, including the VP and the President. Okay, That's 537 people who are messing up your lives. How many of you are there? If you enforce this law and you make them afraid of God and you, as his people, there's only 537 of them. There must be thousands of you, if not millions of you. You have to stop bickering, falling out and squabbling with ego problems amongst yourselves and get yourselves together, united in one cause. And God has told you that there is only one way to do this. 
I just hope that you make the right decision and decide to do it. I can send you these scriptures. I can talk till I'm blue in the face. It will make no difference if you don't do it. And if you don't do it, I'm very sorry, but you're going to burn. And that's the scripture. If you, you either believe God or you don't. And then if you believe him, then you have to obey him. And you have to do his will. And he's told you that he would let all of this happen to you to teach you a lesson for not keeping his law. But he's also told you that he will fight with you and for you. And that you will win. He says so in the scriptures that you will win if you fight. Now, I don't want you to go around killing people. That's not the object of the exercise. You send out the proclamation of liberty to the legislators. And then it's up to them. They either obey God or under God's law, which is the only law on this planet that is legal, then they have to suffer the consequences. But somebody will have to carry that out. And that's what it also says in the law. It says that you have to enforce the law. And that will keep you free. John, we're out of time. Okay, Dan. Thank you very much for being on the program. It's been, you know, it's been great for me. I, I needed to get this message out. I needed to get it out to the right people, and I believe that tonight I have. Thank you will find uh, out, and I'm sure, you know, you can maybe email me or, or phone me and talk to me and, and see how, if there's any response. Yes, sir, I will. Okay. We have to fight, Dan. Amen. We have to fight. I'll lead yeah. them, and I'll show them every step of the way how to fight and win this war. But they have to fight. But they have to do it God's way, not their way. Amen. Are We're you out with of time. me? Are you with me? God bless. And you. Bye-bye.